And welcome back. Thank you so much for choosing us this morning. My name is Aldrin Simpia and this is Morning Live. Our next interview is with the retired justice of the Constitutional Court of South Africa, Johan Krichler. He headed the Electoral Commission that oversaw the country's first democratic elections in 1994. The IFP made a last-minute decision to stand in the election following a period of intense pre-election violence. Let's now speak to Justice Krichler, who's now joining us um, virtually. Justice Krichler, good morning. Thank you so much for making time for us. I can only imagine the conversation that you and Auntie Betty were having about Demangosu Tubutelezi and also the role that he played in our country's uh, transition. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to the viewers, Aldra. Uh, <laughs> I think it's one of the most memorable experiences of my life when we went to interview uh, the, KZ, the IFP KZN legislature in uh, April 1994 to attempt to persuade them theoretically to join the electoral process. The master of ceremonies, the, the stage manager, the, the organizer, the Machiavelli, who, who was running the whole show, was uh, certainly Prince Mangosutu Butelesi. He ran it from the beginning to end. We uh, were ostensibly cordially received, uh, ostensibly invited to a debate in the, the council chamber, in the legislative chamber, and we were subjected to a, 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 an organized program of humiliation of a kind that you could not object to, but at the same time, you certainly could not oppose. Yeah. We left the, the, the scene thoroughly defeated. Yeah. And eventually, though, the IFP would be on the ballot paper. Um, and I remember the conversation that we once actually had about how difficult it was to convince the IFP why they should participate um, in the democratic elections in 1994. Just take us back to those moments, uh, Judge Krichler, and also the final decision that was taken to actually, um, I think it was a sticker that was used to put the IFP's name on the ballot paper. In, in very brief terms, at the time, the KZN uh, legislature, uh, Bantustan, under the, the prince, had resisted joining the electoral process. They were not satisfied with the interim constitution that had been drafted or with the terms that were incorporated in it for the final constitution. They wanted a federation, not a union. And they said they're not going to join in the process. Now that was very, very serious because the Zulu nation represents something like 15 to 17% of the legislature at the time. If they didn't join, it would have a very serious effect on the legitimacy of the elections. In their very nature, the elections had to be inclusive. It was an election that included all of the Bantustans. They would all come home and uh, South Africa as a, as a single unit would be voting. They were opposing that, they held out. They then eventually negotiated for better terms and certain local privilege privileges, certainly the position of the Zulu king and the uh, special rights of the uh, Zulu royal house to, to, to uh, traditional Zulu land and special controls. So they did negotiate and did get special privileges. Yeah. They agreed a week before the election to join. At that stage, it was desperately late. We had no planning in KwaZulu-Natal for polling stations or for polling staff. And they certainly went on the ballot paper, which was a long, uh, a 30, 40 centimeter long document. We knew that we could get them in at the last minute. We had made plans that if there was an agreement, we could get a sticker printed with the uh, IFP 
uh, on it, and we could stick that at the bottom of the ballot paper. In other words, even though the ballot papers had already been printed in England and had been delivered and distributed, we could still at the 11th hour get the IFP to join. It was a desperate move, but it worked. We've managed to get the artwork for the printing for the sticker that had to be printed in England. We had the artwork taken by a courier to uh, what was then Jan Smuts Airport, given to an SAA pilot with instructions to hand over to the printer's representative at London Heathrow. There the printers collected it, they printed, they sent back. And when the election started on the 26th of April for special votes, we already had 84 million of those stickers printed, but not distributed. They were distributed in the course of the election itself. Some stations didn't get them, and we had to make special arrangements for, for write-ins for the IFP there. But in the end, ultimately, the whole of the KwaZulu le legislative area was yeah. included in the election. They voted, they made a part, contribution, significant contribution, and the IFP actually won control yeah. of the province of KZN. Uh, the prince's gambit worked perfectly. He gained control of that province, and the subsequent history is a different matter. Yeah. He certainly managed to win the province for his political party with great political skill. And also, of course, as you mentioned earlier on, Ingo and Yama Trust, they managed to secure that. But just in conclusion, though, um, Justice Krechler, is um, so just before, just before the elections in, in, in April, in March, there was that IFP march to Shell House, the ANC headquarters at the time. Um, at the time when you were preparing for the elections as the electoral body, did you believe that the elections could go on violent-free, considering the violence that played out outside Shell House? Aldrin, you touch on a very, very sensitive point. At the time, the nationalist government had actually lost its credibility. It was no longer uh, manifestly on control of the country. At the same time, the uh, executive, the interim executive council that was uh, running the country had no uh, vested reputation in the country. There was a lack of national authority. And we in the IEC said, we have got to establish that our credibility as a transitional body, an authoritative body, and a, a credible body, uh, is established, and that was a major effort. That was in the area of why we negotiated as a as an authority in its own right with the KwaZulu government and also with the Botswana government at the time. It was a touch and go that we would have the authority, that we would have the capacity, and if we did have both, which we would be able to deliver elections of the necessary credibility. That we managed to do so in the end was largely due to the cooperation and the active participation of all of the political leaders, including Prince Butelezi. Thank you so much for your time. Um, that is Justice Krichler, former Constitutional Court um, Justice there, speaking about the legacy of Prince Mangosutu Butelezi, but uh, specifically focusing on the transition in 1994. So you just heard there, two weeks before the elections, that's when the IFP agreed and said that, yes, we'll participate in the elections and the extremes that uh, the IC had to go through to try and make sure that the um, IFP is on the ballot paper and eventually, of course, they would win um, the legislature in KwaZulu-Natal.